Hey folks, this is a GTX 780 Ti, the cream of the Kepler crop, and when it was released at the end of 2013, it would have set you back a cool $700. It was faster than the GTX Titan, which was released earlier on in the same year, and it was the car that finally brought the full Kepler GPU to a gaming product, since the first Titan actually featured a cut down GPU. Now, this is a used EVGA 780Ti superclocked with an ACX cooler, a card that came with a nice 15% boost in clocks over the reference 780Ti. This card was bought from an enthusiast, someone who bought the card new, cherished it, and cared for it. Dust was practically non-existent, and when I talked to the seller, they informed me that they changed the thermal interface material every 6 months or so. In short, this card came from someone who cared for their components. This is also a used EVGA 780Ti superclocked with ACX cooler, and this card was not bought from an enthusiast, unless he was an enthusiast of dust, cigarettes, and abusing computer components. Two cards that started off their lives in exactly the same way, but travel in a very different path before finding their way onto my desk. And in today's video, I'm going to try and show one thing, the importance of actually caring for your components, and what happens when you don't and if a misused graphics card can be brought back to the levels of performance enjoyed by one that's been meticulously cleaned and cared for. Now, I've had this good GTX 780 Ti for a while now. I remember back in the day drooling over the SC ACX, and when one came up for about £100, I snapped it up and that was that. The second, bad, grotty, oddly smelling GTX 780 Ti, it was bought on a whim. And in its case, it was also bought very cheaply, £45, because it, and I'll quote here, suffers crashes after around an hour or so of gaming, and sounds like an F1 car. That's the seller's words, not mine. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that's probably because it's disgustingly filthy, and it looks like it's never been cleaned. So, first up, a simple thermal test. Now, using the good 780Ti, I've run a stress test in 3 Mark and logged the temperatures with the fan speed set at 85%. A random speed I know, but all should become clear when we take a look at the other card. At these fan speeds, the well cared for 780Ti completes the stress test, which runs for around 10 minutes or so, in a well ventilated and chambered workstation case, with the final GPU temperature being 59 degrees C, which by anyone's book is a great result. Now for the bad one, and the reason for the fairly high 85% fan speed, and that's simply because under a stress test, the stock curve, it reacted too slowly to the spikes in temperature, causing clocks to drop and eventually fail on the stress test. The 85% fan load allowed the test to pass, which would also explain why the seller said the car sounded like an F1 car. But while we got the test to pass on this uncared for card, don't think that things are equal. By the end of the stress test, the GPU had seen 72 degrees max, and was bouncing about between 70 and 71 at the end of the test. A pretty massive difference of over 10 degrees C compared with the well cared for card. And the stink that those fans were kicking out into the office was, putting it very kindly, brutal. Now, I've done a good few graphics card refurbs on the channel so far, so I won't go into too much detail, but the steps I took to clean up were fairly simple. Dismantle the card, four screws around the GPU, in this card's case, and ensure that the PWM fan is disconnected before you pull the card apart. The GPU looked like it had the original 2013 thermal interface material, which had gone all crusty, and that was simply removed using isopropyl alcohol wipes. And then the PCB was, and I think the word attack would be apt here, with an electronic duster to remove most of the dust and loosen up the crud that had been baked onto the PCB. At this point, I removed the mid plate from the PCB to check the condition of the thermal patch, which actually turned out to be not too bad. I then hit the PCB with ECC cleaner, electrical contact cleaner, which just helps remove all that hard to get dust and grime buildup and I left the car to dry overnight. Now, leaving overnight is not really something you need to do, as ECB cleaner, it will evaporate completely within an hour. The fan assembly was dusted using the electric duster, being sure to secure the fans when dusting as you don't want them spinning up and deforming the bearings. Then it was a case of using the same mix of ECB cleaner and isopropyl alcohol and wipes to clean every nook and cranny of that cooler. Once everything was clean and dry, I applied some fresh MX2 thermal compound to the GPU, and the card was reassembled in the reverse order. 
easy, cheap and it only takes about 30 minutes if it's your first time, 10 minutes or so if you're used to doing it. And the result is, and I'm sure you're not going to be too surprised here, a temperature curve that roughly matches the good card that it has been cared for since day one. Now electronics don't gradually wear out over time, they generally just fail if they're going to fail, so it's no surprise that when returned to optimal conditions, the graphics card performs pretty much identically to the good one. Fans however are mechanical and these can wear out over time, more so when you run them at higher speeds for a lengthy period, and that's the only downside with this refurb 780 Ti. Yes, the fans are now clean, lighter since there's no dust and grime, and they run more freely, but any wear and tear that's been done by the previous owner is still going to be present. And that's the case here, as the fans are, I would say, noticeably louder at the same speed compared to the well cared for card, and that's reflected in the slight increase in temperature compared to the good card that we can see on the graphs. But if you take anything away from this video, it's just a warning, care for your components and they're going to thank you for it and they're going to perform better in the long run. But hey, on the plus side, I've now got two 780 Ti's to play with that are both perfectly fine and in good working order. And with that, I'm going to leave it there. As always, thank you for tuning in to watch this video, I'd love to hear what you do to keep on top of the cleaning of your components, and what you want to see me do with these 780 Ti's. Remember to use those thumbs and let me know what you think of the video, and consider clicking subscribe if you've not done so already. For now though, take care, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.